Ah, what's up everyone? I'm back. Let's check in, see where we are at with the action. It is now 38 to 13. It is now 38 to 13. Is Arby's is still holding the lead. They are at 38 to 13. They are still holding the lead. Tom Brady has 18 points currently. Cam Newton only with three. That's so far the storyline. No, my wife ate it all. We have no salsa. There's no salsa in this house, John, because my wife eats it all. Um, let's see, 38 to 13. Let's take a look. So far, T.Y. Hilton, the big story on Arby's lineup with the zero thus far. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, only with two points thus far. Ertz and Jacquez Rogers are carrying the load offensively other than Brady with their six and four, respectively. So the next owner we will be uh, touching base with is So We don't believe in all that mumbo jumbo. Um You're looking at Beaver Street Roars team. They need something needs to happen. Somebody's got to get in the paint. They need to score. Somebody has to get something going. Right now, although Arby's has put up points, right now Tom Brady's the only one putting up points. And um, they have the possibility of actually going into half and not a terrible situation because uh, T.Y. Hilton with zero and LaShawn McCoy with two. Man, if you can continue that trend, that's not bad. For uh, what Beaver Street Roar is trying to get done. But they've got to get some points. Clay with one currently. Come on. They're playing the Jets for Christ's sakes. But uh, that was the question with Clay coming in. They were switching quarterbacks. He didn't know what was really going to happen there. Uh, Brady's back in the red zone again. Brady's in the red zone again. T.Y. Hilton's also in the red zone for uh, I'm Thinking RBs. But uh, T.Y. Hilton has been a ghost thus far, as Jacksonville is actually up 10 to nothing in that game, which is a shocker. Um, but I guess not really a shocker, because the Raiders kind of killed the Colts season last week, so they have nothing to play for. So that, that was my other question mark for them, is, uh, is what was going to go down. So uh, it's 39 to 13. As uh, the points keep climbing. I'm thinking RVs and um, no points are on the board for no touchdowns on the board still thus far for the Beaver Street Roar. Somebody's got to get in the paint for the Beaver Street Roar. You got DeMarco Murray. You got Cam Newton. You got Charles Clay. You got Mike Wallace. You got a couple defensive guys going, hell, it could be one of them. But one of these guys got to get in the paint for the Beaver Street Roar. Because uh, if another touchdown gets put up on the board for uh, RBs, currently it's a 143-94 to 94 score projected by the line graph of NFL.com. So that is getting stretched out there. That's getting stretched out there. Looking back at the score, it's 39-13. I'm thinking RBs over the Beaver Street Roar.
here holding strong but the Beaver Street Roar really needs to score really needs to score So, we're going to go to our next owner that we have on the phone here. Um, joining us now, we have Mr. Uh, J.W. Hauser, owner of Donkey Punch, former league champion. J.W., how are we doing this afternoon? Doing pretty damn good, man. How are you doing? All right. I'm, do I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. I'm, uh, I'm currently watching... Uh, RB's holding down a 39 to 14 lead over uh, the Beaver Street Roar in the Super Bowl here, and uh, so obviously so. you didn't finish with a very good record this season. How do you feel about your season as a whole? How do you sum it up? You know, I I knew I was going to get off to a slow start because I I draft terribly, but uh, I'll be real honest. I was by the time that I picked up. Uh, Jaya in that trade with you, I was feeling really good going into the last five, six games of the season. Um, but man, I'll be damned, the wheels just fell off of it. And uh, I just it seemed like every week I found some way to shoot myself in the foot, you know? Yes. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Freaking, that's the one thing I think I'm good at. <laughs> I've seen that. So when you're looking ahead to, to next season, obviously it's our biggest draft ever. It's a total reboot. You get a you, you get a chance to build your core team. Uh, you know we're gonna have a live draft lottery to pick positions. What do you what do you look at going ahead when you're looking at the first piece of the puzzle to build Donkey Punch for the future? What are you looking at in that first round pick? Well, you know, let's preface this by saying that you know I'm terrible at the draft. You're talking to a guy that picked Kyle Orton first <laughs> overall. If we remember that. That was so, epic. That being said, I can certifiably tell you, I think the biggest piece of the puzzle is locking down a good quarterback, and especially in a dynasty league, dynasty league like this one, getting getting a guy that's not a Peyton Manning at the end of his career, but maybe like a Dak Prescott at the beginning that you can keep for a while and, and kind of ride that pony. Because um, I've been, you know, a year that I picked Orton, and that was that was the same year that Tebow ran him out of the league, and I fought that whole season <laughs> bouncing around between backup quarterbacks, and you just can't win. Um, this league is just too deep if you don't have a good quarterback. So that's where I'm starting. Um, and then I, you know, have the constant debate between – do you put more eggs in the wide receiver basket or the running back basket? And I haven't quite solved that riddle yet. No, me either. Me either. That's that's where I'm struggling a little bit too on that coming into the draft. I think I'm looking probably quarterback first. I'm not. I have not penned it yet, but I'm leaning towards quarterback first. Yeah, I think that that's. Uh, I mean, if you don't have consistency at that position, it's really hard to do anything because it's you know running backs are. You know, they you can get a good running back at the start of the season, and he's washed up by week fourteen. You know what I mean? It's just it's it's such a it's such a fly by night position. Um, I feel like I get a little bit more consistency out of out of wide receivers. It's a little bit easier to get a crop of those guys that'll put up consistent points for you. Um, so I don't know. And then you know, the tight end position is one that I found that if you can get a couple of good tight ends, that's a good one to have in the flex spot. Um, uh, but it's it's hard to find consistent tight end production as well, you know? Yes, yes it is. Well, the crop's going to get a little better because instead of having a crop of 20, you'll have a crop of 16 in your in your respective conference. So the, the pool of players will get better by four whole rosters of players. So that will help dramatically with um, a little more gems on the waiver wire, a little ability to work through injuries a little better than we currently are. And uh, so... I think it'll make things a little more interesting. Obviously. Yeah, and that's I tell you that that's for me. That's one of the funnest things about this league is once you you know, once you made your first pick on draft day, the rest is pretty much just all about how well you did your research and how well you did your homework and what kind of sleepers you can find because it's just this league's just that deep, you know. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So when you look at uh, when you look at today's matchup, who we've got in the Hardcore Bowl Eight with, I'm thinking RVs against the Beaver Street Roar. Who are you picking? Currently, RBs is up 39-14, to 14, although Beaver Street Roar's 
got is kind of second half heavy. They've got a lot of players to play still. But uh, who are you picking? You know, I I got I, I really I'm happy to see both these guys playing in the championship because they've both been around forever and they're both consistently good. But solely based on my love of potato cakes, I'm going for RBs. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. I don't know what the hell that means, but what? come on, a, a potato cake, an Arby's potato cake, maybe oh, okay. a Jamaica shake, an Arby's, Arby's potato cake. All right. I guess I'm not a. Uh, I don't go to Arby's enough, apparently. I apparently guess. not. Jeez, must be a. I don't know. Must be a Colorado thing, or a Wyoming thing. You know what else we got here? Taco yeah. Johns. Oh, Suck it. You're a bastard. <laughs> I hate you. Yeah, I know you do. <laughs> Meat and potato burrito. <laughs> good <laughs> oh meat and potato burrito that would be so good yep. right now with super I'll, nice send you, I'll send you a pick all right so switching from fantasy football to real football all this right. afternoon we have donkeys raiders yes yeah man and i tell you what i, I i'm I'm curious to see uh, what's going to happen to you guys without Derek Carr because that guy is, I mean, he's hes playing phenomenal football right now. Uh, the thing oh, is kind of, we just had a big like play he, for Jacksonville linebacker for RB's got an interception. So he's up to seven points at the linebacker position. So he's up 42-14. Nice. That was a big play right there. That is a big play. Yes. That is a big play, but yeah, speaking of defenses, the, the Raiders' defense is what surprised me this year. They've gotten so much better as, as the year's gone on, so I'll be curious to see how they do in the playoffs. Um, I'm not even sure if Denver's going to show up play this game today. I think they're going to start uh, Paxton Lynch for the majority of it. Did you hear about um, the coach? I saw a little blurb on the, online that he's talking about retiring. Yeah, this may be, this is his last hurrah. Do you think that's a little, you think they put that out there today hoping to get the boys to play a little harder today? That could very well be. I just, I've never, through the course of anything, I mean, I listen to a lot of, you know, the, the talking heads out here, and there are a lot of them are ex-Broncos, and they're pretty tuned in to, to what's going on, at, you know, in the Broncos organization. And that's the first that I've heard any inkling um, that he might be getting ready to retire. Hmm. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's kind of a ploy. I mean, I think that's maybe something to get the guys out there to motivate them to, to try and, you know, put a kink in uh, in the postseason, but uh, who knows? I mean, he does. He's got some health issues. I mean, Jesus, he was in the hospital last season. This season, he just you know, the, the body can only take so much. Yeah, I know. So, I don't know. I know you. I know you are very thankful that this season did not happen. About you know, several years ago, when you had, would have had to work with me through this season. Because uh, can you just imagine how painful that would have been for you? Uh, I'd have eaten a bullet. <laughs> Do you imagine all oh, the joy I could have had going to oh. every Monday morning? Oh, that would have yeah, been fabulous. I am, I am so thankful that the, the years I spent <laughs> as your apprentice that, that the Raiders were terrible. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes, but we don't suck anymore. It's great. Finally. Finally. Finally we don't but suck. But I tell you, I tell you, I don't like the Raiders. I don't like the Cowboys, but the league's a better place when they're relevant. It's yeah. just, it's, it's, this has been a lot of fun this year. Yeah, you know, I'd like to see the Broncos do better. Um, but uh, it's, it's, it's just a better, it's a better division when, when the Raiders are playing good football. Everybody needs the bad guy. Yep, that's the damn truth. <laughs> All right. Well, you picking Arby's? They're up, now, they're up now 46 to 14 as T.Y. Helton just got on the board. As they got, he just got five points. So um, they're climbing. They're 46 to 14. Not as much as I would have thought they would have been currently. I'm shocked McCoy only has two so far. Yeah. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. Good luck to both those guys. All right. Well, J. Deb, it's good talking to you. Thank you for uh, taking some time and uh, out of your day. Not, not a problem. And, and I can't wait for next year. Yep, you bet. Next year's going to be awesome. 
Thanks for joining us. We're going to let's jump back into checking out the live action. Like I said, it is 47 to 14. As more points just went on the board. As Telvin Smith, linebacker for the Jags, is lighting it up for RBs right now. As he has an interception, five tackles, he's got nine points on the board so far. This is all in the first half of football, folks. That is pretty phenomenal. That guy is getting it done. He's, uh, he's putting in work right now, and he's making up for a little bit of the slack with what's going on. Some of RB's offense, you know, LaShawn McCoy, I'm shocked, only has two points. T.Y. Hilton finally came alive. Grabs five points there here towards the end of the second quarter. Uh, Ertz and Jacquez Rogers have been sitting on their six and four for a while. But the the defensive player with Telvin Smith making the big plays, Jacksonville Jaguars for uh, RBs, making the big plays. So, want to put this out there. If anybody's got um, some time, you want to call in. Phone lines are open. It is currently 47 to 14. 47 to 14. Arby's is maintaining their lead. They're keeping it rolling. They're keeping it rolling. They're setting them up and knocking them down. Right now, Arby's is looking good. 47 to 14. They're going to keep it rolling. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. I'm pr pretty impressed by uh, Telvin Smith thus far. The linebacker from the Jags, the big interception. He is um, making things happen for him there. Making things happen for him right now. Beaver Street Roar. Almost to the end of the first half of the first slate of games. And still has not got a touchdown. Not Nobody has put it in the paint yet for the Beaver Street Roar. Oh, my. I wonder what Matt's thinking. Hmm. I wonder what Matt's thinking right now. So he's looking at this start. Kind of makes you wonder sometimes, you know. Because I know what I'm thinking, man. I go through I go through waves of thought process when I'm watching the fantasy football game, watching the football game, what you want to happen, and, uh, you know, what you think's going to happen. It's a big difference sometimes in what you want to happen and what you think's going to happen. That's for damn sure. 47-14, we're sitting, kind of stalled out, everybody's off the field currently. We got a minute, right a minute left in the New England game. 42 seconds left, McCoy with only two points, holding with that two points. You watch, that could, that could be something there. T.Y. Hilton, though, was carrying that goose egg for a good part of the first half, and grabbing that five points right there is a big five points for RBs. But at 47 points right now, their projected line of RBs is only 146. Beaver Street Roar's projected line's at 92. I don't. I think they're going to score more than that, but they, they've got to start getting some points. They're just not getting touchdowns. Oh, and Cam Newton with a pick. Oh, Cam Newton with a pick. Big fail. Oh, Cam Newton. Oh, no. McCoy's out of the game. Tom, with the, with the breaking news. Yes, I heard about Airside F. I've already got 
other text messages. It's not related to us. <laughs> Sean McCoy is out of the game with two points for Arby's. Ooh. That's no good. It's no good. Only two points to the number one running back position. That's not good. What's the injury, Tom? Do you have an update on what the injury is? I hadn't got anything in there. Forced out of the game, season finale with an ankle injury. LaShawn McCoy is out with an ankle injury. Uh oh. That's not good. That's not good at all. He's out. Oh my. LaShawn McCoy, scratch him. He's out. Scratched. Ankle injury. Out of the game. Will he come back? Don't know the severity of it. Hadn't seen it yet. So. But so far, this is the first big blow to RVs. They probably were looking for any reason to take him out. I completely agree with Carroll. That, that would not surprise me. I was honestly shocked that they were going to run McCoy because th they didn't have a whole lot to play for. So I was kind of shocked. That, but I didn't know if he had some incentive in his contract that he was trying to get because there's a lot of guys that are playing this week that have... Um, contract incentive clauses that are trying to hit those so I thought maybe that was a possibility maybe he had something to go for um, Mark Ingram had got pissed off the other weekend on the in in the on the sideline because they would give the ball to Hightower when he was a touchdown away from uh, getting some coin for getting uh, over a certain amount of touchdowns for the season so you know he wanted that money he wanted that money so it's hard to tell. So let's look back at the score. Back at the score. Still 47-14. Holding strong. You've got uh, Jacquez Rogers on the field. Forty-nine rushing yards. At the flex, he's going to have to pick up the pace, uh, fill the gap by Lashawn McCoy, who has left the game. Two points as all McCoy put up. It's definitely a big opportunity, but uh, right now, Beaver Street Roar with a minute 32 with his quarterback left in the half. Cam Newton only has one point, 60 passing yards, an interception, and five rushing yards. He loses this game. You're going to look directly at Cam Newton as to why, and that's not good. He's to the core of uh, Beaver Street Roar, and uh, to have him go down, that's not good. That's not good. Not good. Not good. So... That's the Beaver Street Roar, looking for Cam Newton. Where the hell are you, Cam Newton? He needs to show up. He needs to show up. Still holding 47-14. Beaver Street Roar, his team has not showed up today. Not showed up today. The first half of football has not been good. The first half of the first games for the Beaver Street Roar. It's not been great. Not been great. So, when a um, few of these games go to half, we are going to take a brief break of the live coverage, and uh, we'll jump back on right when um, the games all start kicking back off for the second half. Know a lot of them are going to half right now, so uh, and then we'll uh, jump back on here and um, keep the coverage going. Right now, um, say it's still 47-14, and I'm thinking RVs is holding a strong lead, strong lead over the Beaver Street Roar. Will it continue?
and we'll see if it will continue. We'll be back shortly. Pick up a few guys after the half. Beaver Street Roar. Hardcore Bowl 8 is up 47 to 14. Or down 47 to 14 against I'm Thinking RVs. RVs up 47 to 14.